sometimes you will find yourself in life in a very awkward position. Like when your girlfriend's kooky mom roasts you at a pre-barbecue table prayer about how you're no good for her daughter. I was there for that. Actually happened. It was very awkward. It was pretty it's pretty great because like we were laughing the whole time and like kicking each other under the table. Are you hearing this man? It's it's fantastic. I love it. But bass playing's no different. Why would it be? No, absolutely not. Huh? It's real skits. So so much of life is a metaphor for bass playing. I've not bass thought. playing be a metaphor for life. Mm. Life is a metaphor for bass playing. Right. So we're talking about Of course. We're talking about You gotta it? put yourself in the best position to succeed. Right. That's what this is about. And that's what I'm here for, buddy. Man, All thank right. you for stopping by. Yeah. Uh huh. So we're working on uh, a very specific position last time. I was slapping and popping. Hey, are you are you the most popular one? Mm hmm. But uh, definitely not the most important. Hey, for sure. We just gotta go through it. By the way, this is Rick and Bacher going through a dark glass B7K Ultra pedal mm -hmm. direct in. That's the tone. Sounds good. Uh huh. All right. So we're talking about slapping and popping. That's our. That's a, because we already worked on it. We're gonna say that mm -hmm. that's our first position, right? Yeah. Sure. Uh huh. And again, position, position just meaning kind of like where your hand is in relation to the string. Right. You, might, you might see different bass players kind of playing up, down, all over the place. And if I haven't said it once, I've said it a million times. The control comes from your left hand as far as the XX noise, but we are really going to be focusing on the right hand. Yep. All right, so slab and pop. Gonna, that's our first position. We already kind of worked on that, right? Yep. We're going to talk about the most popular one, mm -hmm. and that is up position. Okay. Right? And up position is simply this. Now, this starts a lot of different ways. Yep. You see some of those old timey basses on the old P bass and old jazz basses, there's actually a thumb rest to support this position. Mm -hmm. I never really enjoyed those as much because I felt that my small hands was already stretching too much and I wasn't getting the kind of control I wanted from my right hand. Okay. Now, I personally uh, don't play Rickenbacker, I play a jazz bass mostly, mm -hmm. where this pickup is back here a little bit more and I'm much higher up. That pickup is a perfect rest for my thumb, it always has been. So depending on the bass, this could be a little bit different for you. Absolutely, and just like, and really like, what's the most important is you find what's comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have like an Ernie Ball, which is like a Music Man Ernie Ball, which is another, is like a Stingray, which bass I also play, mm -hmm. it's way back here. Yeah. Now tonally, it's a different sound. It does. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so find what works, but uh, this Rick and Barker, this pick might be a little too low for me to do this, so I'm just gonna kind of put it on the pick card right above. Um, and that seems to be working really well for me on this bass. So you're, you're anchoring your hand in a way that you're creating repeatable patterns with your fingers so you're always right. going to hit the right Because that way, like the motion of your fingers coming up isn't keeping your wrist up. Mm -hmm. That's already planted here. Yep. So, pick hard. so, and then really, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds so simple, but we have to go over it, is that you're simply just bringing your finger off a string. That's right. Now, there are like famous bass players like James Jamerson who only use one finger to do this. Mm -hmm. And then there's guys like Getty Lee, are you one of the greatest bass players of all time who uses three? Yeah. For sure. Uh, Les Claypool uses three from time to time too. Mm -hmm. And it's just a good way of getting, you know, hit that string with your finger. I've always used two. Uh huh. Cool. If you want to use one, one of the greatest bass players of all time used one, so I can't say that using one's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. James Jamerson is that great and he used one. Yeah, you leave Les Claypool, you've used three. I'm here to tell you, I split the difference that you two, like, you know, like most of us. Yeah. And it's just alternating. So I noticed that your fingers are kind of straight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing that I see when guitar players try to play bass, they'll have like kind of like, they'll play it almost like finger style guitar to a certain extent, mm -hmm. like jazz finger style guitar where their fingers are bent. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, can you talk about that for yeah. a second? Like, so when the fingers are locked, you're creating a little bit of torque, mm -hmm. right? There is no curvature. It's going, so that pressure of a straight finger almost flicks it off, right? Now I'm curling my finger to get to the string. Mm -hmm. But once I'm actually making contact with string, that those fingers lock out. Okay. And I'm simply pulling it back. I'm kind of just flicking it back. But the finger, when it makes contact, is absolutely straight. And you're right, a lot of guitar players do this because when you're finger style picking on a guitar, mm -hmm. it's a different thing. The strings are much smaller, and you want to not only get underneath the string, you want to you curl your finger because you want to be able to be right underneath the string once again when the string releases, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why when you're finger picking chords on guitar, it is more relaxed like that. And I also think this is important when it comes into like speed bass playing. Mm -hmm. Like if it's just one note, uh, just like rocking it. Yeah. I think if you try to do that with like like a finger style guitar thing, no it, you, you just won't do it. Right. Uh, no and you, you have a speed limit capped. Right. So I think it's kind of important to think of like actually how straight your fingers are and that's an important thing to like how you lock your hand into it. And that's another like uh, another reason for people using three fingers. Is that there's another finger and they're taking up the workload. Yeah, sure. So, but two always work for me. I seem to be um, fast with it. So like a little groove, uh, I'm gonna try to work with the same chord progression for all these positions about a show. Okay. Right, so the first one is, uh, 
this up position, right? Little groove, a little chord progression I always use to show things like this. And we're just, just really focus on uh, my, my right hand. Cool. Ready? Let's hear it. <laughs> talking about the control part too like sometimes when that groove is in a part where I don't really want a note to ring you hear a lot of mutes from time to time mm -hmm. so like what really is a mute it's me plucking a dead sh a dead note and now, it's easier to add those mutes in my experience because it's keeping the time they are so again we made this a talk we made this uh, argument in an earlier video mm -hmm. about when people are using slapping and popping just to keep a rhythm yeah it's no different here. I'm gonna show an example of when using up position for dead notes can absolutely like, keep a rhythm going. So. There it is. It, it uh -huh. keeps it going and you're not flooding it with unnecessary notes that aren't serving the song. Right. But you're still keeping the rhythm going. And that, let's be honest, like, you can be a Hall of Fame bass player if that's all you do. For sure. If you never leave the pocket and you know when to keep rhythm but not necessarily play a note, like you, like I'm not, not exaggerating, like you're a good bass player if that's the case. And you'll be a guitar player's best friend, right? right because because they can just riff it right. and do whatever they're doing over that and you're holding it down. There it is. Right, because at the same time, there's always a rhythmic aspect to your bass playing, even when it's not necessarily um, a melodic one. And you're not actually adding notes to it. Your job may not to be that notes adding notes to it. Sure. But the the emphasis that a lot of bass players give, it's like, hey, I'm just a guitar playing a guitar player playing root notes, mm -hmm. and every note is sustained out. Right. You know, and that's not the case. Like it should be. Mm -hmm. Always don't feel like you have to fill that empty space with notes. But back to that position. So really, you saw a way that we were kind of. Controlling the rhythm using dead notes, mm -hmm. but still using the same technique, and then yeah. filling it in as needed with with the notes that serve the song the best. And all coming from that position, the foundation of that one position. Right. Now, the most common thing, that's probably the one you should be working on the most. But maybe the song doesn't require that. Maybe the song requires even more control than that. There is a position out there There's that is thing. underused, but it's used by the best. Oh. Right? Please tell me more. Yeah, and that's a position that I've actually been working on a lot now because I think that it, although it requires more use of your right hand for control, mm -hmm. it's actually really important, especially if you're playing uh, jazz or like something a little bit, uh, or like something that's really in the pocket, like a blues, but it's not really in your face. It, your job is to be in the pocket. Now, just to be super clear what we're talking about when I say in the pocket. The pocket is when you and the kick drum with the drummer are seamless. There are different versions of that, but for the sake of the most basic video of, you know, that we're working on now, mm -hmm. Just know that that's the pocket. It's you providing that basement, that foundation of rhythm that everyone else can build upon. That's the pocket, right? So when I say that, that's what I mean. So this is up position. We're gonna to go to down position accordingly, right? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our hand about 90 degrees. We're gonna move it back a little bit. I'll tell you about why we do that. Please do. Because I want, ideally, I want the fat of my palm here around the bridge in the event that I wanna use it to dampen the string, right? A lot of old basses came with something called mutes and they're little foam pads that a lot of Motown players did because they, they didn't want full notes. They wanted these little staccato mm -hmm. stutters. A palm mute, if you will. Right, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're using our palm to mute the strings as we want, right? And essentially what you're doing is you're using the, side, the same side that you're using for slapping, but you're kind of using it as a pick, like a guitar pick. But the difference being a guitar pick is very, very thin and because of that, it creates a very, like, uh, it hits a string in a very specific manner. Mm -hmm. Where the thumb is so much more dull because there's so much surface space, right? And the material is actually flesh and soft and it's tissue as opposed to being a hard nylon or plastic paper, right? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna work on that. So think of it as a pick. My thumb is, again, my, my palm is resting right here by the bridge and my thumb is just here. So we're gonna put a, a very similar thing. Now, you can use your thumb as a pick the entire time. exact same technique that we used earlier with our slap and pop, we're gonna use those same two fingers on the same two strings like you would in a popping motion. So instead of, it's just gonna be more of an up position where you're just kind of pulling the string in. This works really, really good with chords. So the same, like I was, I'm gonna use the same chords that I was using for that lick earlier, but in down position, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, again, it's this motion. My thumb is the pick 
and these two are accenting. So. That's a lot different than for sure, right? It's way because there's a contrast between the bass and the chord. Absolutely. So now we're gonna use what down position we use for, and that is even muting it. So we're gonna give us kind of a cool Motown kind of thing, right? All right. So now I'm playing a li not a lot of pressure. The, the the emphasis I need to make here is I'm not now squeezing or applying. It's just now it's just resting on it more than it was before. Very, and you'll you'll feel it. You'll feel how to pull off or on. And we're gonna kind of mute a little bit. So you notice how it's much more muted. Yeah. And it's tonally, it's so warm. You know? It's yeah. cozy. It's nasty and cozy at the same time. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> right? No, but it's cool. That's like a way to control it. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing something, or say it's like a bridge or something where everything Bring it back. Everything's coming down, and you're gonna, and you need, you need to create that space. So when you come back out of the bridge to a nice big epic chorus, mm -hmm. there is a difference. And down position may be able to help with that. Cool. So there's a breakdown, and maybe it's just you know you and the drummer trying to fill it in. Try, try going to down position for sure. Try to get that little bit of that little Motowny, you know, muting. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I love about Motown music is like the bass is so good. Probably the best era for bass playing. Yeah, I personally I think so. Yeah, not to say that the '90s weren't flooded with amazing bass players. Mm -hmm. You know, the Fleas, the Tim Comerfords, the Peanuts, the Dirk Lances of the world, All the less Claypools, but you know that was a really good era. But yeah, Motown in general. Where everybody was good, it seems like, you know? Yeah, uh -huh. As opposed to like just being able to name five. Uh -huh. or, and now it's just a. And that's where it really came from because a lot of people weren't buying uh, mutes on, on bridges because they had kind of fallen out of favor. Mm -hmm. So people were using a lot of down position. Uh, if you want, like, the, to see it, like, watch Pino Palladino play, one of oh. my favorite bass players. Yeah. Uh, plays he's with John Mayer a lot. Yeah, know. plays with Mayer a lot, uh, plays with Nine Inch Nails a lot, uh, D'Angelo, plays with a lot of guys. But uh, he's, he is a, a master. I, mean, I truly mean a master of doing this. And he has a really interesting way of um, keeping it even more of a faster tempo and maintaining that consistency of the mute way better than I can. So he's, that's like for if you want to do continued learning. Just check out some Pino Ponte and some listening homework. Yeah. So we've kind of gone over a couple things now. We've gone over slap pop. We've gone over uh, up position. Also kind of over down position, which is great for chords. I can't emphasize that enough. And if this is the first video you're seeing, you didn't see this laptop one, I'll make sure to list the other ones in the description. Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so uh, man, I hope that I hope that actually is like some good bass playing for your channel. I think so too, because I I remember when I first picked up, I I started playing bass like a guitar player plays before I met you, mm -hmm. and I was just it was a mess. You know what I mean? Like there was no consistency. Sometimes I'd use three fingers. Sometimes I'd use two. Sometimes I'd just use one and just go up and down. Yeah. And like I, I wish I had someone to like actually explain to me the difference. But yeah, here's like the fun about this. And um, notice how we we're not really going over picking. No, not at all. Because here's the thing, and like, and that's, and I do want to touch on that really, really quickly. There is a place for picking and bass playing. Sure, of course. But I feel like to prevent any guitar players just playing guitar and bass, mm -hmm. like let's work on some bass player that uh, like bass player things that are just uniquely for. For bass playing, because picking a bass is like picking a guitar. Right? Sometimes you might want to use a thicker pick or something like that. Yeah, but you'll you know, use it's... you'll use a thicker pick because it's a thicker string. Yeah, but other than that, the technique's the same. Uh -huh. And I'm sure you already have picking videos, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, some. Yeah. So sure. we're we're not even gonna touch that. So mm -hmm. there is definitely a place for it. Yeah. Um, but there's these are three positions. Uh, not all the positions. There's still more, believe it or not. But these are the ones like you need for sure. And, like this is like a great place where if you have a good lick you're working on, try it with the with that little slap off. Try it with just grooving with some dead space and some dead notes with up position. Mm -hmm. And try like super focusing on the pocket in down position. That'd be something to work on. And then we know with that, listen to this guy's music. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna link it to you below also. Thank it's you, beautiful. Yeah, appreciate it. Awesome, man. All right. And if you have any questions or comments, hit us up in the comment section.